We have a segment now that we want to share with you where the U.S. Air Force is getting ready to test this brand new missile that's light years ahead of anything we have right now. It would give commanders the ability to hit any target in the world in about 60 minutes' time, anywhere. It's a hypersonic weapon called the X-51 Wave Rider. You see it on your screen, launched from a B-52 aircraft using a new propulsion system capable of reaching speeds six times the speed of sound. Watch the animation here. As that missile burns, below it will drop what's called a scramjet. And off you go. John Reed's an air warfare reporter for DefenseNews.com. John, good morning to you. Uh, we just showed that animation where the B-52 essentially launches a missile out of the plane and the scramjet goes and tries to hit the target. We have that essentially right as to what they're trying to develop? That's exactly it. I mean, this is the latest development in the Air Force's effort to build an airplane that can take off from the United States and fly to any spot on the Earth in about 60 to 90 minutes and then potentially someday even come back to the United States. And you can only imagine what that means uh, in terms of the options it would give the president if a crisis happens somewhere on Earth and he needs to send a spy plane, troops, uh, supplies, even uh, a weapon anywhere on the planet this, very This quickly. is truly revolutionary. That, I mean, there's nothing like this that's ever been developed, right? Well, they've tested them a few times. Uh, even going back as far as the 1970s, they've tested this kind of technology, which is called scramjet. But they've been very short tests, and they're, for the most part, classified, so nobody knows a lot about it. So it's pretty cutting-edge technology. And, frankly, we don't know a lot about it either. I mean, we're just really scratching the surface of this technology, but the Air Force will continue to test it. And you touched on a scenario there in your first answer. If you had actionable intelligence, if you knew where Osama bin Laden was, and you had 60 minutes to take action, this would enable you to do that in the future. This would. I mean, this would let you do it from the United States. It would let you go after a variety of targets for a variety of purposes very, very quickly and then return to the United States. I mean, right now, the only thing that can reach these, these speeds are large rockets. All right. This is called hypersonic. What, what is hypersonic as opposed to supersonic? It's generally referred to as anything above Mach 5, Mach 6, where you're going 6, uh, 7, 8 plus times the speed of sound. That's fast. <laughs> wow. So it's travel time, essentially. That's, that's the great advantage to this, right, John? It's extremely fast, right. Travel time, but it's also reusable. Like I said earlier, uh, the only thing we have right now that can get up to these speeds are rockets. And those are one-time shots. You use a rocket, you launch it, and that's it. It's done. Whereas this would take off, similar to an airplane, the, in the ultimate evolution of this technology, it would take off like an airplane, fly to wherever it needs to go, and then return like an airplane. So it's reusable, so it's, and in the end, it, it probably is, is cheaper, and you could, you could figure out a way to launch it again. Uh, we're looking at the exactly. B-52 that eventually could carry a plane, hypothetically, the scramjet that you described. What is a scramjet, by the way? It, it uses oxygen, it sucks in oxygen, and that's what gives it its propulsion? Basically. I mean, the, a really simple way to think about it is imagine two household funnels uh, brought together at the narrow end. And then this aircraft's going so fast that the air that's getting funneled in there and compressed down to fit into the narrow end is then super hot. And so you spray fuel into it, and then it explodes out the back, and that's what gives it its thrust at these high speeds. Well, so you could launch a nuclear weapon, couldn't you? You could launch anything you want. Anything. Just load it up on the back. And some critics have said that you can mistakenly launch a nuke and it would be mistaken for a nuclear weapon. And perhaps someone else who's nuclear capable could misinterpret that read. Have you thought about that? You could do that, although a lot of people are worried that uh, by a, a, a large rocket launch can be misinterpreted as a nuclear weapon. So that's with these, point. it may be uh, a little bit easier to launch a conventional weapon and not have it mistaken as a nuclear weapon and going the same speed as a rocket that would or would not carry a nuclear weapon or anything else. You know, John, if it works at some point, how does that change warfare? How does that transform the ability that we would then have? Well, a lot of generals in the Air Force right now are talking about the need for, for a long-range strike that can overcome any modern air defenses, since they've been considerably upgraded, even against what we faced in uh, Iraq in 2003 or in the Balkans in the late 90s. Those were old anti-aircraft systems from the 1970s. Now places like Iran and North Korea have much more modern air, air defense systems that are being sold by Russia and China. This would allow us to essentially, potentially, penetrate those air defenses and strike with impunity 
Yeah, I mean, e even those old uh, air defense systems in uh, the Balkans were able to bring down a stealth fighter, if you remember. Mm hmm I sure do. And, you know, when you get solid rocket fuel, that means you can load up a rocket. I mean, it, maybe, maybe it's in Iran. And you load it up within an hour, and you have exactly 60 minutes to take out that warhead on the launch pad before it gets up in space. This is how something could be developed and used by the U.S. military. John, thanks for coming in today, okay? Have a great holiday you, week, Bill. all right? You bet. John you Lee from Events News out of Washington. Marianne? Well, the weekend blizzard hit retailers hard on the East Coast, turning.